Hey guys, welcome to the party. We are the Weekend Rockstars, your weekly podcast for all the tips, tricks and licks you need for getting started in music. I am Scott Freeman and with me as always is Billy, just showed me a really cool YouTube video, Deadman. I certainly did, Scott. Yeah. Do you want to tell the audience about the video I showed you? Oh, definitely. Um, so Billy just showed me this clip. Um, it's, uh, it's the Ghostbusters theme tune, uh, but with, uh, with the Beastie Boys... Uh, one of their was it intergalactic? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, intergalactic over the top of it. So it's it's them rapping intergalactic over the top of the Ghostbusters theme, and like now I've seen that I was just saying to Billy, I was like, why hasn't that existed for like the last thirty years? You, you, you can't you can't unhear it. <laughs> yeah, either it's perfect. It's the perfect marriage of hip hop and yeah, uh, classic comedy movie genius <laughs> yeah that's that's great man uh what's the channel called um, that did let's, it? Check. let's give him a shout out yeah william Morancy. <laughs> okay right so if, if you go if you go on youtube and you type in william Morancy. <laughs> m m a r a n c i okay so yeah, check that guy out and and uh, type in his name and and Ghostbusters Beastie his, Boys and his, and you'll probably find it. I imagine his lead video is Freddie Mercury rides a roller coaster. <laughs> it's ten seconds long. Okay, shall we try to click click it and see what happens? We'll probably get sh- struck down. Yeah, okay, we'll, uh, we'll watch it afterwards. Watch it later. <laughs> But yeah, go check out his channel, um, support the YouTube community. Um, yeah, man, so this week we are we're getting into the topic of uh, should you drink and play a gig? So should you drink alcohol and mm. then get up on stage? Um, and I think people, different people have different opinions and it's like a spectrum. Mm. You know, I've some, I know some people just like, I won't you know sip a, a a beer before i go on stage i gotta be pure headed other people like i gotta be mashed to go on stage and then other people just like oh, i have a few casual pints building up um so what's what's your opinion billy well let's i just thought we should preface this obviously if you're an alcoholic don't <laughs> yeah. drink <laughs> yeah well yes it yeah that's that's <laughs> but, a given uh, yeah <laughs> but uh but for everyone else uh i guess um it's a double-edged sword, I guess, because I mean, some people need that confidence boost. Yeah. Uh, as you say, uh, they need they need that to be a bit lubricated. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to perform. Um, in my case, I mean, I've I've explored all all aspects <laughs> of the uh, of the spectrum of drinking before a gig. Aye. Um, and some to different results, I guess. Okay. Um. I mean, I can do a gig sober, stone cold sober, yeah, and I'll enjoy myself. Uh, and I'll probably play better for it, yeah, if I'm honest, because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing mm. uh, more so than than letting loose, as they say. Yeah. Um, but also, am I having as much fun? I don't like. I don't know if alcohol <laughs> is is tied to my fun, um, per se. Mm. Um. But yeah, let's let's get let's get into it, Scott. What, what, what are you saying about drinking before gigging? Uh, I've been I've been all over the map of it. I've I've been really kind of I start when I when I started drinking at gigs, which was like when I was fifteen. You know, mm. <laughs> uh, like I I would drink a lot and go on stage, and I'd be terrible, and yeah. I'd be a mess, and I'd I'd make up words, <laughs> 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 you know, and I'd sing the lyrics wrong, and it was just terrible. Um, and I just felt like such a fool, so I went hardcore away from it yeah. for quite some time. Um, and then I kind of met myself in the middle. Eventually, I was like, I'll have a few drinks, I could kind of control it a bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was bad for some time. Um, I've, I mean, I imagine we've both got some stories which we'll uh, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um, but it is this it's this kind of argument, as you were saying a second ago. You know, uh, you know, you can play Stone Cold Sober, and you can uh, and you probably focus more and play better. You know. But um, but is it more enjoyable, mm. <laughs> you know, uh, if you have a few pints first? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I guess, like, I think maybe when you've had a, a, a couple to, like, give you, like, the, the pre, pre-gig pre pint as it is. Yeah. Uh, or, or a couple of pre-gig pints. You, you, I guess it does give you that, the kind of confidence, I guess, you get 
doing anything you've had a, a couple of drinks i guess yeah um and you probably won't notice any fluffs you make as much or care as much really yeah um and you can just enjoy yourself but equally professionally how on it are you in terms of uh, your performance mm. but sometimes like performing isn't just like playing the notes exactly right anyways it's about the energy you give off on stage yeah um i'm not saying you need alcohol to give off good energy no. cause some people don't need that at all you know mm. um i mean i can i can rock out and get into the music without the alcohol um having some alcohol can just make it a bit more easier sometimes i don't know it also do, it, it depends on a lot of factors well, like how how busy the room is and how into it the crowd are and, and everything like that can, can yeah. also affect everything how if anyone else in the band's having an off night or you know many factors alcohol yeah. though it's it's a it's a delicious beverage of your choice <laughs> <laughs> that that can aid in enjoyment in moderation is the key yeah. i believe but i i think we we should get into the horror stories that we probably both have we we should do can, yeah. can you remember the first time you had a drink or too much to drink and you remember the first time where you you thought like, it occurred to you like that you had made a mistake <laughs> 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 like like a big mistake in, in drinking too much yes in terms of, um, um, in terms of performing yes yeah. um so it was when was it? it this was going back to pre about 2007 um and uh, i was performing in my band with tom the bad thing Mm-hmm. And we um, yeah. we were playing at Lammas Park in Staines, uh, yeah. kind of open air gig they were doing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was with this kind of like council initiative that I'd been a part of since I was, I think, 13, 12 or 13. I think I was 12. Um, yeah, I was 12. And basically they went into into school and in the evenings and we'd kind of... Um, yeah, we'd we'd rehearse and then they'd have like professional musicians come into the room and give you feedback and help you with song construction. And then at the end of the term, you'd have a big gig and Shepparton Village Hall or something, you know. Right. And so we did stuff like that. And so we'd like left that behind, but we were still in contact with them. So they contacted us. And I was we going like, to say, hey. you weren't getting drunk at 12. I wasn't getting drunk at 12. <laughs> no, no. I don't think so. No, no. no. Um, so we're fast forwarding a few years. Fast forwarding a few right, years, okay. but that's kind of the backstory for how we got this gig. And right. sort of the context was this is sort of, it's like this youth initiative thing. We're all like 15, 16. I was, I don't know, one of the two. Um, and uh, and yeah, we we got a big old crate of Fosters, and and we were like we were underage. So mm. you know, back then, you know we got our mate who was 21 to buy us a crate and <laughs> everyone had one of them <laughs> everyone had one of them we had our mate chewy who would always get us a crate before a gig and it was just it was just terrible it's just looking back it was just so awful you know but it was so exciting because it was like oh we're not supposed to be doing this we're not allowed to drink at this gig um and uh and yeah i got up on stage and we had this song where I shouted this really obscene thing at the beginning where basically we we were on a train to a gig once and we were like coming up with a song song lyrics by passing around a pad and like writing writing a sentence and then someone would pass on the next one and then one of the sentences that we wrote was smell my cabbage beaver baby <laughs> And so it became a thing at gigs before this. Before we played this certain song, I'd always go, "Smell my cabbage beaver, baby!" Do do do, and they would like launch into it. And I was so drunk, I got up on stage and I went, "Smell my babbage kiva, baby!" <laughs> <laughs> classic <laughs> and just everyone in the band was like oh no he's gone he is gone and i had to i, I, I think i swore and because it was like this youth initiative thing i had to get up for our second set and apologize at the beginning and i was pissed out of my head it was a really it was just like it was not a good moment yeah i've had worse moments yeah yeah okay. but uh i mean should i tell that one or do you want to get onto one of yours I, i'll tell i'll tell you the first time for me yeah uh was actually my 18th birthday party okay that i had organized for myself and um i had the band i was in at the time uh distant red just oh yes distant yeah. red, distant red. <laughs> um perform and we we literally had just changed drummers um because uh, the original drummer on that band left and 
yeah, basically, I, obviously, it's my ber- I, my own 18th birthday party. Yeah. What what 18 year old isn't getting totally mashed at their 18th birthday party? Exactly. I got mashed. Obviously, mm-hmm. I, I got totally drunk. Um, and it got to the point where uh, everyone was like, "It's gig time now." I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." <laughs> you know, get up on stage. I organise this to party. I'm thinking this this will be great. I can perform still while I'm drunk, probably. And you, you get up there, and, and suddenly your your hands and your fingers aren't doing anything they're supposed to. Uh, every other member in the band was drunk as well. So I I I have it on good authority from other people in my family and friends that we were god awful. <laughs> 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 and uh, I believe that was the last gig Distant Red ever did. Oh um, no! So uh, yeah, that was the end of that band. I didn't like the drummer, the new drummer much. You didn't so. like the new drummer. No, nah, yeah. he was he was a bit of a weirdo. Um, yeah, that's a whole other story, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just I just remember in the middle of this haze of this gig, on standing there with my bass guitar, thinking, "This this ain't this ain't right. This isn't good." <laughs> Um, <laughs> mistakes were made. Yeah, mistakes were made. Because <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I, I just, I just don't know how, I, how anyone can perform to the best of their ability when they're that drunk. And mm. I was, I was that drunk. I was totally off my tits. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. So. Yeah. 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 That's 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 the thing. If it's so easy, you know, if you're having a good time. And beers are flowing to drink too much before yeah. you get up on stage. It's much easier to go, actually, no, I'm not drinking at all, and then just get up and play play straight. Um, but you do, it's so easy to get caught in the atmosphere of the evening if it's like, if it's a good crowd, or if it's like a house party or something. Yeah, house parties and are dangerous. House parties are very, very dangerous, yeah. yeah. Um, I played um, I played a vegan house party. Uh <laughs> Was the beer vegan? <laughs> Everything was vegan. Um, the uh, the guy put beer on... is vegan anyway, isn't yeah, it? I, I think so. Um, so it's just wheat and barley, barley, and barley, water. barley, and water, <laughs> barley and water essentially. Some yeast, is yeast, yeast yeah. vegan? fermented yeast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, there's this really good guy. Um, he he seen me play some somewhere else in Southampton, so he had me come play. Um, and uh, yeah, like I I didn't. This is 2014, so like veganism wasn't like as in, in in your face as it is now. It's a much bigger thing. I feel like yeah. I see it on social media and advertisements all the time now. I heard yesterday uh, from a friend uh, or Matt actually yeah. on Fuzzwalker was telling me that him and his girlfriend went to KFC to have the new vegan burger. Okay, and apparently it was tasty enough, uh, but it was very small, very okay. small portions. Right, has Matt gone vegan? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. When you go out with a girl, yeah. man, who's a, veg- she, who's a veggie or is a vegan, vegan you, you go that way. That happened to Tom <laughs> so yeah. for a while. Um, anyway, hey, sorry, um, like sorry. good luck, Matt. Right, okay, <laughs> if you're listening. Um, so, but yeah, no, so yeah, it was it was, it was was one of these parties um, and he was like, e- everything's vegan. Uh, there's a chili, vegan chili, uh, vegan Doritos, whatever, you know, <laughs> and then it's like all the alcohol's vegan as well. I was like, cool uh and uh yeah no it was very tasty i'll give him that man um but uh but no, I'd, I'd, I'd i had a lot of the vegan vodka that night oh, yeah. yeah and um double v vodka double v i can tell you my absolute worst horror story drinking from a gig yeah okay, yeah you tell me yours and, and then you tell you t- okay yeah. right mine's sadly quite recently <laughs> <laughs> i really i really regret this but I'll, I'll kind of explain the context this is when i was on tour in 2018 yeah and you'd actually seen me play the previous night in southampton oh yeah uh, at the hobbit and uh things in in the band between me and one of the members wasn't too shiny at that time which uh, you know eventually led to a bit of a bust up in the in the north segment of the tour as you do yeah, <laughs> as you do, yeah. Um, things get rough up north. Um, and so things... He was being, I believe, quite passive-aggressive towards me. Yeah. And I was... Uh, I was... I was... I didn't... I didn't know quite what to say. And I didn't understand why he was being that way. There was just... There was a lot of tension in the rehearsals beforehand because he wasn't getting some of the songs that we were putting down. Because we were trying to do a bunch of new stuff. Um but like we played well at the Hobbit, and I thought, oh, like the rest of the tour is gonna be pretty smooth. Like it'll be fine, even if it's a bit rough on off stage between us. Yeah. Anyway, 
um he was just just there at the gig he was just being a bit passive aggressive with me and i had some we had some fans come along and uh, we uh, i'd also had some some of my friends who hadn't seen in ages come along who like to drink yeah. uh, and uh and so they would just buy me drinks and I'd been so tense for like the previous month because of working with him and just preparing everything for that tour was so draining, getting all the merch sorted, booking all the shows, rehearsing, getting it so tight. Um, and I was just wiped. And so as soon as I had one beer in me, I loosened up and I felt yeah. like a release. Yeah. And then my problem was I drank too much. Mm. I drank too much. I just kept going because I just wanted to kind of, escape from yeah. all the negativity and the problem was i turned into a blubbering mess yeah. once i got up on stage and um yeah the sound man they had at the venue i'm not gonna say where but um yeah the sound man was not f- great yeah and so I, we were struggling to hear ourselves through the monitors so while we were playing halfway through the each song for the set i would run up to the little sound booth and huh. back to the stage and hopefully get some sound out and like i just wasn't focusing on the crowd i was totally focused on my sound and that uh-huh. and then the next day they said the sound wasn't that bad you were just that bad oh you no. know and, and, uh-huh. and i was i was scratching my head because the sound was so bad i cut the sh- i cut our show off early yeah we were supposed to play another 20 minutes yeah and so the guy paying us didn't really want to pay us the whole thing because of it yeah thankfully because i was good I'd played enough good shows for him in the past. Yeah. He was generous enough to pay us, but like it's, I had to apologize profusely yeah. online afterwards while still drunk. Uh-huh. And then just like, it made the situation in the band worse. Yeah. Cause it, I, it was no longer me feeling like someone was being passive aggressive to me. It was now I made this absolute blunder, Yeah, you know, and I just felt awful. And yeah. I've just, yeah, now I'll have I, I'm limiting myself again to just like one drink. Yeah. And I think well it's also a personal thing. It's also just like don't work with people that are like that. Yeah. You know, don't don't bury how you feel about someone. If it's not working, deal with it and don't deal with your problems in a, in the wrong way by drinking it and drowning it. I, that was totally the wrong thing to do. And I should I, I should have known that, you know. Uh but I hopefully I'll never do that again. Yeah. But like that was I was so bad, man. Um, but oh, then, yeah. yeah, you know, life goes on, and thankfully, I'm on good terms with Adam again. So, anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what was yours, man? Well, it's like for, for mine, it was a. Um, uh, so basically, it was back in early days of of my uh, blues band, I was in Albany Down. Yeah. Um, we did this gig in Camden, and we were on quite late, and it was also quite empty a venue. But for some reason, like we started drinking some drinks, and I guess I just kept drinking more and more drinks, yeah. and I was getting more and more, uh, m- more and more drunk. But also, just I was just ha- I was happy being drunk. I was like, this is I mean, this is like blocking out all the fact that it's a uh, not a very good venue, not very like not a very big crowd here. Yeah, and I was just like, you know what, fuck, I'm just gonna get drunk. So I got drunk, and um, ended up doing the gig. Uh, wearing Kanye West glasses because I, <laughs> I thought that looked cool, um, yeah. and I was so drunk that I literally, um, I what happened was I missed a bar out completely of a riff, <laughs> uh, and I was the one that does the intro of the song. Oh man! <laughs> so it completely threw us. It basically made the whole song completely like rotten from the start. <sighs> Uh, it was. I might as well have been playing it backwards, you know. And yeah, everyone yeah, in the band yeah. was like, "What the hell are you doing?" Like, you know. And um, yeah, it's it's one of those moments where you realise you've let the band down. Yeah. Um. So from then on, I I think like yourself, I I just I resolved that really drinking should happen after the gig. Yeah. Uh, and yes, yeah, that's uh, what you, I do. You want to have a good time, or or and also just have one, two maximum if you you know if you can handle two drinks before a gig yeah um and and that's that's sort of served me well these days like because i have to drive to every gig yeah i can't really drink at all anyway so yeah um, back in albany down you didn't really have a car did no, you no i didn't have a car i get i would get the train everywhere or get driven everywhere yeah. by, by the band uh so 
yeah, these days obviously driving myself, I can't really drink anyway. So yeah, um, that's kind of just changed everything for me in a way. So I have to be sober, and I said that you get used to doing gigs sober after being used to having a couple of drinks before. Yeah, um, and you know what I say, like you, you play better. You, it's a bit more professional, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think you realise you don't need alcohol to have fun. Like you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. hear all these glory days of all the rock and roll. Yeah, uh, yeah. Back in the day, it's all about sex, drugs, rock and roll. Um, and I'm here to tell you, it, it ain't like that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah Not yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe it is for some artists, but uh, they probably loaded and uh, you know they can afford that lifestyle yes that's it i mean i think that's the thing when you when you grow up you're you're you know playing rock music your yeah. idols are you know your 70s and 80s bands that were yeah. like deep into the excess of it all yeah you know and you and you do think oh that's part of it you yeah. know so when we started drinking and playing gigs you kind of feel like you're channeling that and we felt like awesome we were just like yeah we're pissed and on stage this is cool <laughs> and then like when you make an absolute blunder and you, you just realize oh actually i'm just making a tit of myself then you've got to go um the other way <laughs> with yeah it, don't you? drinking responsibly is yeah. so it's part of growing up really isn't it it is like, yeah like it is day. Uh, so most people manage to get there and, and learn how to drink responsibly. Uh, there's a, obviously plenty of adults that don't. Yeah. Uh, and they're usually your friend that is always the most drunk at your friend group at everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I uh, Another little story is yeah. uh, back in 2017, um, it was a few days before I went to Crete with my brother. Yeah. I had a gig in Essex, and this this was a very special gig actually because on the tour that we did in 2015, we played in Chelmsford in Essex, uh, a place called Asylum. Did you ever play there? No. It was like this venue built into a fire duct. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was, re- <laughs> it was it was really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a really good time playing there. Um, and that was like. It was a very dramatic gig because I'd stupidly, we'd gone out on the road, I'd forgotten my acoustic guitar. I didn't pack it in the car. Can you believe that? <laughs> the lead instrument of the band, my acoustic guitar, I, and I left it at home. I've, I've done the leave the bass guitar at the venue after the after gig. After gig, yeah. Twice. Oh, man. Horrifying. It's horrifying. <laughs> I did it once last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. It, it, yeah, so I thankfully like at that gig i i was able to get another acoustic guitar and played and we played to a packed room and it was great yeah. but we didn't get paid anything and i had to pay like 200 pounds for two rooms at the travel lodge yeah. that night and so it was like a massive loss for me but yeah. that was at the point where like i just wasn't really charging for gigs yeah and i thought oh it's touring eventually this is going to pay off in a big way yeah. so it's an investment and I didn't think that investment would come back so quick because two years later, I get an email from a random guy that saw us play and said, can you come back and play at my football club in Essex? Nice. And I was just like, yeah, sure. And I tried to get the band to come, but everyone was busy. Yeah. Um, and I was I, like, it was one of the, like the best gig offers. The guy was like, I'll pay you 300 pounds and I'll put you up in a hotel, nice. you know? And so I was just like, okay <laughs> to play half an hour yeah um and so he would have put all of us up but instead it was just i i did it and i got my brother to come along and do my merch store which was no. a nightmare <laughs> 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 but um uh never again um so yeah so yeah i went along and did the did the gig in essex but the problem was the night before i went out with some old friends uh. and i don't i don't see him that often and i used to have this thing a couple of years ago whenever i saw them i just kind of like i wanted to see them because like old friends and everything but they kind of moved on and it felt like whenever i was there i was kind of like furniture yeah. and so i would drink a lot um so i just was I, i'd come out of my shell and the problem was yeah the night before we went out to walton and had i had a lot to drink i had a stupid amount to drink yeah. and i was just gone and then i woke up in the morning i had to drive to essex i was super hungover <laughs> um it was just it was just the worst in fact before essex i'd booked another gig in the afternoon in like the watford area so we had to drive all the way there play in someone's back garden and then drive to essex and play i was just, I was just so hung over yeah. it was just <laughs> terrible man i was just like 
stupid, Ho- stupid, Ho- stupid. Hotel's like mistakes were made. Oh, mistakes were made. And like, as soon as I hit the pillow, that travel lodge that night, I was just like, oh, never again. Yeah. Oh man, it's just yeah, it's just such a don't drink the night before a big gig as well. That's the moral yeah. of that story. I've, I've done that as well. Uh, I can't remember what year it was. 2010, I think it was. My parents came over for the first time. Oh, yeah. Uh, since they had moved to Australia and that. And, and I went out with my dad and all his little work friends for yeah. drinks uh, at the Hobgoblin. Oh, uh, yeah. Now the London Stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, yeah, like, obviously, I'm, I'm with a bunch of, uh, you know, 50-year-old blokes. Yeah. That obviously have loads of disposable income. Yeah. And, and obviously just want to... At the time, I was, I was a poor like 20 year old yeah um and i was just getting everyone's just buying like round after round after round and i don't i don't know how much i drank i just drank way too much that night yeah uh, trying to keep up with all these 50 year olds <laughs> should know better really yeah. they should. <laughs> one, one guy got disposed of in in the toilets like he literally he went to the toilets in the in, in the hob and started um I think he he ended up just being sat on the toilet with his trousers around his ankles pu- puking. <laughs> <laughs> so he got sent home in a taxi. Yeah. Uh, I ended up like calling uh, a bunch of girls I work with, professing my love for them. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> I, I I had a cigarette for the first time with oh, some wow. girl outside the the pub, and I was like, "Why am I doing this?" Yeah. Then we went and had a curry at like eleven o'clock at the Shahi. Yeah. Uh, we're all pissed out of our minds. Get to bed. I next day I wake up and I'm like, "Oh my god, my head hurts." And I had a gig that night. Yeah. Uh, first gig my parents were ever going to see me do a gig oh. properly. I think mean, I was destroyed last night. Yeah. Um. So you know. <laughs> Somehow, obviously, like sobered up the best I could, uh, and and but I had a frothing headache for the whole gig. Mm. It kind of like obviously I did the gig. It went right, but the headache, man, Ooh, that hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bringing my A game that night. Probably no. not, but um, yeah, it went right. Okay, <laughs> so. so- don't get too don't get too drunk, kids. The night before a big yeah. gig, yeah, it's not not a great idea. Um, here's here's a question actually. Um, so obviously there are gonna be some people out there who do go for a wild night out, and uh, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. Uh, and then get to the next day, and then get a gig booked right on the day, yeah. and then go, like I, I've I've had that happen before. We've had a wild night out, and then the next day someone's like, "Do you want to come play a gig?" And I'm like. Oh, okay, it's paying. I've got to make a living, uh, yeah. and so I'll go do it. So I've had to like try and like find some hangover cures, yeah. and so I, I'm curious as to what have you ever had that happen before? And and it, it, it either way, what is your hangover cure? Um, Lucasaid to hydrate. Yeah, McDonald's breakfast to line the stomach. Boom, uh, <laughs> and painkillers. Painkillers. That's, that's all it is, and sleep. Sleep, yeah. And if you can't sleep, then then those three things. The Lucas will give you some energy as well. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, it's uh, it's it's sugary stuff. Yeah. Like for me, like I never crave a Krispy Kreme donut <laughs> the way I crave a Krispy Kreme yeah. donut when I'm hungry. Wow. But, yeah. <laughs> that's like, oddly specific. Yeah. It, Krispy it, Kreme donut. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I just like, I wake up. That, that one before I had to go to Essex. Yeah. I just, my mum was going to Tesco and I was sort of saying, I was just like, please get me a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tender Krispy right Kreme. now. <laughs> Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme um, and soup. I find okay. soup usually does it for me, you know. And do you know what? Funnily enough, I tend to write really good songs when I'm hungover. <laughs> I found this over the years. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. I really don't understand why. If the alcohol in my system is like, you know, easing me up or something mm. as it's leaving my body, it's really bizarre. I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. But there you go. Um, yeah, man. So it's been an interesting discussion. I think our horror stories will hopefully put people off from having too much to drink. They yeah. gotta learn themselves, though. But yeah, the, also <laughs> the, the lesson of the story is you're probably gonna learn yourself. You know, know your limits. Don't do anything too stupid. Yeah. Uh, but you know, have fun. Um, and if you get addicted to alcohol, stop. 
yeah and that's seek help. it yeah <laughs> yeah when the fun stops stop you know yeah. like just don't yeah. do that don't drink and drive don't do drugs um is my advice <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Don't don't do the other one. I mean, that could be a very different yeah. podcast. I didn't bring it up because well, <laughs> if you if you want to see uh, what drugs could do to your performance, I have a specific video that people can go watch. It's uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, performing under the bridge on Saturday Night Live back in early nineties. Okay, and it's where John Frusciante is so messed up on heroin. Uh, that he's literally playing it in the wrong key to the rest of the oh, band. Oh, man. And Anthony Kiedis is, you can see it in his face. Like, obviously, he was doing hard drugs as well at the time, but you can see it in his face, like, oh, no. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're on live television live right now. Live television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's... He's really struggling to, to sing. That's what drugs will do to you, kids. That's what drugs Don't do will that. do to you, yeah. Oh, okay, man. But that's a similar thing that can happen when you're drunk as well. You might not know you're out of key. Yeah, that's that's yeah. true. Yeah, I, I will... Yeah, usually sing quite badly mm. uh, when I've had too much. Because yeah, I mean, I really have to focus on pitching some of my songs anyway because yep. they're kind of pushing my vocal range. But yeah, that's uh, yeah doesn't help any. Mm. Yeah, cool. Can't believe Matt's a vegan now. I know. They that's just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah. What were his reasons? Well, he's going out with one. He's going out <laughs> with one. That's it. It's like it's like either that or or only eat meat when you go out he's like oh, i might as well just become vegan yeah 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 okay mm. interesting yeah I, could, I mean good luck to him i i can do it i nothing against vegans but i just, no. i like meat i like meat as well i'm sorry it's destroying the planet yeah yeah but, <laughs> but that's that's more farming practices than anything that is like, true, that could yeah. be solved with uh proper legislation from the government but they're never gonna do that so i don't know there you go yeah, I don't have the solutions. I'm just a bassist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a musician. <laughs> oh man, uh, man. So yeah, there we go. Uh, we have come to the end of our podcast. Um, I have been Scott Freeman, and with me, as always, is Billy Deadman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anticlimactic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, cool beans um take care of yourselves guys and uh we shall see you next time peace see you later <laughs> nice <laughs>